Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is the second in this very small mini series about how not to play your class. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the rogue class. And there's nothing wrong with however you're playing your rogue as long as you're enjoying it. Um, but I thought I would tell you Tharivol's story and his background and how he functions um because rogues are rogues are rogues are rogues so what can we do to make them a little bit more interesting and to be honest it's about that background story um you know what do they excel at what what's their personality and all of those things now i did try and do this video and i thought i would get varus Tharavol to tell you his story himself and I've recorded it several times and every time I get to the editing I hate it and I've binned it so I did try to do this another way but really my acting skills are not good enough and I do not want to be listening to my awful awful fake voices for characters so you're gonna to have to put up with it like this okay so this is Tharavol Nalo he is a rogue uh, is he just any old rogue? No, and in fact, he won't even acknowledge that term rogue. Uh, he doesn't want to be categorized like that. He is a high elf. He is pompous and arrogant, and he deserves to be absolutely at that top table, no matter what the occasion, because he's classic, arrogant high elf. He moved to Neverwinter, to the city of Neverwinter, to find the people that he should be with the aristocracy he should be whining and dining with the best of the best the theater the bards the games of chance the wine the buffets this is the life that he was born to and perhaps didn't quite fit in at home where he wasn't able to necessarily find his way to the top amongst his local high elf society. A lot of competition. But he didn't come empty handed. He came with some savings and with some money. But of course, Neverwinter is not a cheap city to live in. So he's, n he's not stupid. He knows he needs to pay his way. But he comes with a skill set. By day... Tharivol, I've got to get his names right because he's got more than one. Tharivol is, in fact, a gem cutter and a jeweler. This is his stock in trade. He has connections with the dwarves and with the gnomes for accessing um, raw gemstones that he will cut and polish and turn into finished products. He's experienced with cutting stones for for particular settings and to get their light just right and his character is built with those skill sets he is on character sheet a jeweler that's what he does so he very easily found his way especially with his pompous arrogance and the way that he speaks he found his way into the guild of jewelers within neverwinter and he spends his day doing exactly that, working for the guild. Now, as a guild member, he gets board and lodgings on top of his meagre uh, wages that he gets paid. And for a lot of people, this would be considered a very stable position. You're fed, you've got a home to live in, uh, you have money to spend. It is the the aim of a lot of the residents of Neverwinter to attain such heady heights of stability and security. For Tharivol, that's not enough. Tharivol wants to be out there in society. He wants to be attending the balls and visiting the theatre, playing cards, drinking the finest wines, eating at the finest eateries, mixing with the aristocracy as is his birthright, at least in his mind. So how can he possibly elevate himself enough to do that? Well, we all know that for these showy uh, parties and the balls and things, you need money. So how is he going to obtain that money? Well, one way 
is by not spending any money in his lodgings. All of his money is devoted to the finest clothing, the finest dining experiences when outside. But at home he lives in absolute squalor. The plaster falling off the walls, the old furniture that is crumbling. Of course he could afford this, but if he did this there would be no parties. But his meagre income is only going to take him so far. So how can he get that balance? How can his external uh, his external character that the people see his opulence his finery how can he ensure that that is the entire picture of his life at home as well as out in society he needs to supplement that income now of course he works as a jeweler and part of his job is he meets the richest and the most influential people in the city. Mostly because they are bringing in their items of finery, their necklaces, their rings, their studded, their gem studded sword scabbards for replacement or for resetting of stones. And he speaks to them and he learns about them and he learns where they keep their fineries and their treasures. Because in the arrogance of the aristocracy, they don't actually believe that anybody would be bold enough to sneak past their guards, to find their way all the way up to their bedroom, find the locked box under the bed, and remove that precious necklace. Except, Tharivol knows exactly where to look. So, at night, when the others are sleeping, and he has finished his meditations, Tharivol becomes Varys. Varys, his alter ego, who will hit the streets and will go hunting. And he only picks on those who can afford to lose things. So the rich, the wealthy, those who flaunt their assets. Because there's only so many necklaces a lady can wear at any one time. You've only got so many fingers for rings. Does it really matter if you lose one or two? Why do you deserve that while Varys lives in squalor? So he absolutely will rob from the rich using that inside information. He does not consider himself to be a thief. He's not a thief. A burglar, he will just about accept that title. A cat burglar breaking in quietly stealthily finding your property pocketing only very specific choice items and then leaving without any trace he was ever there it could be weeks or months before it's even noticed that that ring has gone missing those earrings have been replaced with glass fakes but it's really important to Varys and Tharivol that nobody is ever hurt. He never inflicts any injuries or wounds upon people. While he carries very light weaponry with him in case things get really sticky, he has yet to use them effectively to defend himself or to escape from guards. He relies on his guile and his stealth. And he is continuing to study the ways of magic so that he can use his magic for distractions and for escaping and things like that. So while he's currently a rogue, he is going to pick up some of those magical abilities. He is going to take on the arcane trickster traits uh, and diverge down that road, focusing on illusions and those kind of spells that will enable him to escape. And of course, this is an excellent hook for him to get into trouble. He may need to flee the city, he may need to lie low, or, of course, for the right price, those skills may be on hire to an adventuring party. 
Uh, this includes, so Varys has already been involved in some of those things. He has been involved in heisting a precious egg from one of the museums, mixing with people that he already knew or knew him as Tharuvol, uh, and attempting to escape with the treasure. And on that occasion, although it was high risk, they did indeed succeed, and Tharivol used his cut of that pay to buy himself a new outfit. Because why buy furniture when you can spend your time looking more fabulous than you did before? So this is Tharivol. This is his story. This is who he is. He lives this dual life of being a very upstanding and respectable member of the guild, trying to work his way up through those levels, attending me as many of these showy events as he possibly can. But in truth, at night, he is somebody entirely different. He's a cat burglar, he is thieving, he is stealing, and he, of course, has the skills. He doesn't need to worry about offence, because if he's stealing jewels, he can remove them from, ge from jewellery himself. He can recut gems so that nobody can identify that gem of, on where it's come from. He easily can put those gems back into circulation, sell them on to the next customer, to add them into another piece, pocket the original item, and swap them out. So for him, it's a perfect cover. And it's not a case of he joined the guild in order to cover his thievery. It's actually the other way round. The thievery came because the opportunity was there. The opportunities presented by his work for the guild. The knowledge, these riches, just sitting there. The aristocracy, the wealthy, the merchants, who just carelessly will talk to somebody that is allegedly respectable and reveal what they have, where it's kept, and, of course, he has taken advantage of that. So this is why he has developed these skills. This is why he has this roguish class, even though on the surface he would seem to be just another person. He is driven by his arrogance and his honest belief that he deserves the best he deserves to be in the high place of society so getting involved in any adventures his motivation is going to be about the wealth it's purely money driven so that he can fulfill the lifestyle he believes that he not that he deserves so much it's, he's, he's born right it's his right to be a member of the aristocracy as a high elf so I thought I'd share that one with you. Very different background, very different story to Soriman the Wide. Um, but again, he's built with this flavour, with this background, with this well, what does he do when he's not off on adventures. You know where you can find him during the day because he has a steady job. Well, at least he did have a steady job. As adventures unfold, of course, he may well not keep those. So I hope that's been entertaining. Uh, I hope that's given you some ideas of how you can develop backgrounds for your characters. Why are they a rogue? And just they grow up on the streets. Yeah, it's easy. You can go with that. Um, fighting for food. But you don't have to. You can come up with all sorts of reasons for them falling into these alternate ways of living. Now, of course, what's really interesting with Tharivol during the day and then Varus at night is a very strong code that says he doesn't hurt people. He will always avoid combat whenever he can. How does that mesh with an adventuring party? Well, in his arrogance, what does he consider acceptable to be able to fight? Is a goblin life worth the same as a high elf most certainly not so there's going to be some moral choices for him to make as he goes forward as he continues his adventures as he finds himself in a position where the only escape is to kill where the only way to save his companion is to attack 
What's he going to do? Don't know. Honestly, don't know. We have to see how it goes. And just like in a lot of stories, uh, and you, you speak to authors who, you know, writing books, and they say, oh, yeah, but I wasn't intending that. The character wrote himself. Tharivol Varys will do the same. He will write his own story, and he will develop into this character as he goes through. And I don't know what that's going to look like yet. I suspect he will always be arrogant. Uh, I suspect he will always be looking for his seat in high society. How he gets there, I have no idea. Anyway, thank you for watching. Leave a comment. What do you think? Take care.